So when I went for guitar lessons, when I first got uh, lessons with someone who taught electric guitar, they taught me those five positions of the pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale, and I never really understood it. I mean, I kind of learned them, but I thought, and if it's the same notes in every position, like, why wouldn't I just play them down here where they sound good? Um, and it just seemed really confusing, and I could never see me playing, like, on the low strings way up here. It just would sound, it seemed, it just seemed weird. And, um, and yet, you know, you gotta be able to get around, right? And so, um, after playing for a while and learning actual blues licks, I sort of came up with a way to just kind of categorize where things lay on the neck. And to me, um, it simplifies things uh, and sort of makes things more musical and more connected. So let me just show you the way that I would connect the different positions of the pentatonic on the fretboard, and you can see if it works for you or not. Um, let's do this in G. And so right away you'd have the home position, right? Just where everything lies, the sort of root position. Now the next position up would just be to take advantage of this slide. So I'm sliding from this note, the second, uh, the fifth fret on the third string. I'm sliding it up a whole step, two frets, to the seventh fret on the third string. Now a lot of times you would bend that note, but um, a lot of licks that come out of more of the sort of earlier blues styles, uh, Delta blues styles, things played on acoustic guitar, Texas blues, Lightning Hopkins, involves using this slide, and it gets you up into this position, which you could then complete. which I suppose is technically the second position of the minor pentatonic. In fact, I'm sure it is, but we're only worried about the top notes. And if you see it as kind of a lick bass thing, then it's just an extension of this position. So I think of all of this really being just one position, which is kind of semantic, but it helps me organize it in my head. And so you've got these notes too, but so really we're thinking about this, 7th fret on the 3rd string over to the 6th fret on the 2nd string, 8th fret, 6th fret, 8th fret. But this is the heart of it. And then, the next place you would be able to go, uh, well the next sort of logical thing is to think, well here's my one G chord, here's my next G chord. And so I tend to think, well the other place you might jump to is here. And so that's, here I am, at the, here's the root, at the 12th fret of the 3rd string, and then 11th fret on the 2nd string, 10th fret on the high string. And this is double stop, which totally comes out of country blues and earlier blues styles, with the 9th fret and the 10th fret, and then you're bending the 9th fret up a little bit. And again, I guess this would correspond to the 4th position of the pentatonic, but I really am just kind of worried about this. That, and then being able to slide up again. This is very light and Hopkins. You would do this in open position, but we're doing it up here. And so this is kind of a way of extending this position up to here, where I've got the 15th fret on the second string and the 13th fret on the high string. And so that, or any of that. And then the root would be here, and so if you can squinch your fingers in there, you can get stuff like that. Double stops where you're hammering on from the 14th to the 15th fret on the second string, and then pulling off from the 14th to the 13th. So that's one position. To me, that's all kind of one thing. And then this is all kind of one thing. So there's two positions, and I called this two and a half positions of the minor pentatonic, so where's the half position? Well, it's really, again, this is just kind of wordplay, but this one here, which I guess would be the third position, right? So, and then that one. But what's sort of magical about this one is uh, the root's right here, and so this is where all those Albert King bends come from. 
And then if you take this note and you drop it one fret, this makes more of a major pentatonic sound, and it sounds great over the four chord, which in this case would be C, because here's the third, fifth, flat seven, and nine of C. So here's Hubert Sumlin. And it sounds great if you go there uh, when you've been playing minor pentatonic, either here or here. So let me just quickly show you a little bit about how you might jump to that when you're playing over a shuffle in G. So here you'd have this position sliding up to here. And then, and then up to here. It's a really simple thing just to grab this position on the four chord, but it really brightens things up. So again, this may not be the best way for you to think about the positions of the pentatonic, but if, like me, you are kind of baffled by that whole five position business, just looking at the top part of each position and seeing how to string it together in more of a lick-based way might really help you uh, start to be able to get around more on the fingerboard while playing blues licks. So hope you enjoy. Trying that out, I'm David Hamburger. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.